Yo, this is the Fence Man here with this week's Fence Man exclusive here on Top Row TV. I'm right now here with uh, the great Manny Fernandez. Hey, buddy, how you doing? Did you enjoy the show tonight? Dude, it was an awesome show, man. Man, they carried on, they got some chuck. That guy wrestled the ox, the hog, or whatever they call him. Beast. Man, what a monster. I don't know where they got him from, but when I hit him, I thought I smashed myself in the steel, steel cement wall. Wow, that was I heard, I heard you were trained by Terry Funk. What was that like uh, being trained by him? I wasn't only trained by Terry Funk. It was Terry Funk, Dory Funk, Blackjack Mulligan, uh, Dick Murdoch, Dennis Stamp, Harley Race, Dusty Rowe. I can go on and on. Okay. <laughs> I was trained by a lot of good people. Brother. And it was fantastic because that was old school, the way it's supposed to be taught. And he taught me respect for this business. And so that's what I got. Oh. Well, it wasn't me deciding. It was them deciding. See, I was playing ball at West Texas State. and. I was an amateur wrestler, of course everybody knows that, but I wanted to play in the NFL for a long time. I thought I was going to play there in the NFL and retire, but it didn't happen that way. I didn't have nothing else to do, so they convinced me to be a pro wrestler, and of course I had an argument with them, which I lost, as you can see. Okay. <laughs> rat house, uh, what do they call that? Rat house rat. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> cool, so you have any uh, favorite matches you've been in the past at all? Or? No, lately I've been wrestling some of these young guys, big young guys, okay. and, uh, Ethan Page. He's in base, homicide, and I got low key. I've been involved in a lot of great matches with a lot of my kids, man, that I mentored are coming up now, and I've been joining it up. A bunch of young, good kids out there today, and they're coming up, and hopefully they'll get a shot at WWE. Dude, that is really cool, man, especially to, to know that you're a mentor for other uh, younger superstars, and, and what an amazing feeling it must be, like, to see them uh, doing well, and uh, it's a tribute to you, and uh, it's all about what the business is. It's all about like passing down your your knowledge on the people. Bud Lights. Yeah. You pass down your Bud Lights to the young guys. They understand the business. Yeah. You know, it's like oh, my man Alpha over there. See Alpha? He comes yeah. from a great bright light. But Alpha Seek is a great small man. We got some good time back in the day. With our guest, Manny Fernandez, the Raging Bull. How are you doing today, doing Manny? Good this morning, brother. How are you doing? I'm doing awesome. I just got through watching PBR, top pro bull riding guys kicking butt. Reminds me of me back in the day. Awesome, man. <laughs> now, um, I heard, I heard you were trained by Terry Funk. What was that like uh, being trained by him? I wasn't only trained by Terry Funk. It was Terry Funk, Dory Funk, Blackjack Mulligan, uh, Dick Murdoch, Dennis Stamp, Harley Race, Dusty Rowe. I can go on and on. <laughs> okay. I was trained by a lot of good people. Brother. And it was fantastic because that was old school, the way it's supposed to be taught. And he taught me respect for this business. And so that's what I got. Oh. Well, it wasn't me deciding. It was them deciding. See, I was playing ball at West Texas State, and I was an amateur wrestler. Of course, everybody knows that, but I wanted to play in the NFL for a long time. I thought I was going to play there in the NFL and retire, but it didn't happen that way. I didn't have nothing else to do, so they convinced me to be a pro wrestler. And, of course, I had an argument with them, which I lost, as you can see. Okay. <laughs> now, um, what... Did you say you have the great Samoans then? Oh, do I? We used to party when we got killed one time. Wow. Wow. That's pretty cool. Yeah, we thought it was cool. They pulled the guns out and we're like, whoa! Yeah, that's... He bad. I guess he probably has some wild stories, too. Oh, yeah, we had some great stories back in the day, you know. The Murdoch story, the funk story. Those stories are all old, you know, and a lot of the young guys haven't had that nature of being brought up in the business. Like you say in Alpha, Alpha yeah. Jr., he got up well by his family and all the Samoan. The Samoan dynasty is one heck of a uh, Kishi, all the brothers, Barbarian, nice. you know, uh, uh, all the guys that are Samoan have been good brothers to me in this business. Nice, yeah, that's what's on there. That's what's up, baby. Awesome. You have anything else you'd like to add at all? Or? Yeah, it's just, you know, it's a, a Thanksgiving holidays and everything, and people have to be grateful that there's some young kids out here wanting to learn the business okay. old school and going to proper schools like it's Samoan school, my school. Guys that know the business, get involved with the school, Bob Knox's school. All the schools that are up here, get involved with people know the business and teach the business. Yeah, and no, Rob Noxus is a really awesome teacher, so if you guys want to learn how to become a wrestler, just uh, definitely hit up Rob Noxus. He's uh, very knowledgeable about the business. You can definitely learn a lot from him. And so. you got the Simone Dynasty right up the road. They did. Up in Sika, they, they come. They got a lot of knowledge. Yeah, awesome. uh, what was it like being uh, tag team partners as Dusty Rhodes and facing Ivan Koloff and uh, Don Carnoodle for the NWA World Tag Team Championship? Oh, that was pretty exciting. It was a good match, and they were both good work. Uncle Ivan, one of the hardest workers in professional wrestling. You know, that guy had it coming, and he, you know, you were in for a fight with I, Uncle Ivan Don Cornudo, but it was a pretty fantastic match, and I enjoyed that. Okay. Now, what are your thoughts on uh, Cody Rhodes and with AEW? Not much. 
I mean, they're trying to do something different, which you got to give them credit for that. But, you know, it's like this. I grew up in pro wrestling back in the day, and everybody was a monster. Everybody's a big guy. You get guys in there, this idiot walking around with his hands in his pocket. Do that in a bar fight, see what happens. You know, you got that kind of stupid stuff. Guys, 150 pounds doing this. You know, it, you know, it's it's a good product, but it's not going to beat WWE. At least WWE, you look at the guys in the ring and you can tell. Maybe I don't want to mess with that guy. You look at the guys at EW, you know, you can slap them around like little bitches. You know. Yeah. Now, um. What did you? What was it like feuding with uh, Nikita Koloff? It wasn't Nikita. It was Ivan. 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 You know, Nikita was around for a short period of time, but he wasn't uh, always there. And me and Ivan had the battles. Okay. Me and Ivan had the battles. Okay. And um, what was it like when you met uh, Arn Anderson and uh, working with him? Oh, now talk about a worker. That was one hell of a worker. That guy was awesome to work with. Great matches. Arn had great psychology. He was a tough as nails guy. And pulled no punches, neither did I. And we had great matches. It was awesome. Okay. All right. So, can you tell me about uh, Rick Rude? He's you know, in this time of season, you know, they always get back to thinking about the old days and the old things that were done back in the time compared to the new time. And one of them was Rick Rude. It's probably the greatest partner I ever had. Probably one of the greatest guys I've ever known in the business, you know. When Rick Rude came to me, he had enough knowledge just shut up and listen. Just like I did when I started. He was a great man. It's it's hard to think about these times. When we were together, we spent these kind of times together. Thanks to you I miss him, and you know, he's got a lot. There's still a lot of me in Rude. a lot of him in me. Yeah, it was a great time. Awesome, bro. What was it like getting the opportunity to work with Abdul the Butcher? <laughs> that was crazy. That was crazy. That was like a bull in a chat, two bulls in a china shop. It was fantastic, you know. You know it was going to be tough, you know it was going to be bloody, and it was one of the greatest uh, feuds I had in this profession. Okay, now what's one of the, the be best memories that you had with Abdullah? When he went after Eric Sims. <laughs> <laughs> That was one of the best, Mary. He went after Eric Sims on the table because he's selling his gimmicks. That was one of my best memories. Nice. <laughs> okay.